Welcome back to the latest Sazeng News program, and here is today's news. Search for missing European divers continues in Malaysia. A search and rescue operation for three missing European divers continued for the third day of Malaysia's southeastern coast. Local Maritime Authority says the search area near Pulau Tokong Sangol, a small island about 15 kilometers off the southern state of Johor, had been expanded and were optimistic of finding the divers as they had fully functioning diving equipment and had surfaced before they had disappeared. Maritime officials said Norwegian woman Christine Grodem, who was diving with the group, had been found safe. The remaining divers had been identified by authorities as French woman Alexia Alexandra Molina, 18, Briton Adrian Peter Chesters, 46, and son Nathan Renzi Chesters, 14, a Dutch citizen. Pacquiao vows to stamp out corruption if elected next Philippine president. Shrugging off his low ratings in the opinion polls, Philippine politician and former boxing star Manny Pacquiao said his impoverished roots make him the best person to be president as he warned voters to avoid corruption-tainted candidates. In a jab at the current front-runner for the May 9 election, Pacquiao questioned why people were supporting Ferdinand Marcos Jr., pointing to be plundering of the country wealth during the harsh authoritarian rule of his late father and namesake. It's like boxing. Marcos' family was accused of plundering an estimate $10 billion during his late father's two-decade rule. Pacquiao, an incumbent senator who has made fighting corruption a centerpiece of his presidential campaign, is trailing in fourth place on 6% of the latest opinion poll, well behind Marcos, who is leading with 56% support. <laughs> if elected president, Pacquiao has vowed to strengthen efforts to recover billions of dollars missing since the fall of the Marcos dictatorship as part of his anti-graft platform. The only man to hold boxing world titles in eight different divisions, Pacquiao retired from boxing in September 2021 after the sport propelled him to fame and fortune from humble beginning as a dirt poor youngster doing odd jobs to survive. <laughs> Singapore jails Australian for hurling wine bottle killing man. A Singapore court sentenced an Australian man to five and a half years in prison for killing an elderly Singaporean man and hurting his wife with a thrown wine bottle in what the judge called an act of religious hostility towards Muslims. Andrew Golsing was convicted of causing death and grievous hurt by a rash act for throwing a wine bottle at a group of people two stories below him, striking 73-year-old Nasiari Sune and killing him. The bottle ricochets and injured the shoulder of the man's wife, Manisa Binti Sitri. He is very strong, as I keep saying. He is giving up. Outside court after the sentencing, Glossin's parents, Ian and Pamela, said they did not think Glossin, who had pleaded guilty, to have behaved as he did and also sought forgiveness from the victim's family. The victim's sons and daughter also attended the court sentencing and said they were glad to finally have closure. Glossin's lawyer said they intended to appeal for the sentence. Singapore is a multiracial country of 5.5 million people, of whom about 16% are Muslim, with bigger Buddhist and Christian communities. It has a predominantly ethnic Chinese population with sizable Malay and Indian minorities. The victims have been identified as ethnic Malay Muslims. Thailand sees more international visitors after easing. Thailand had seen a prominent increase in the number of international visitors since the country eased entry rules at the beginning of April. 
Suvarnabhumi Airport, the largest airport in Thailand that boosted an annual passenger flow of more than 60 million before the pandemic, is bustling again after a tough period under strict restrictions to stem COVID-19 infections. In the past week, the number of inbound travelers increased significantly. More than 1,000 international visitors arrive here every day. Starting April 1st, international visitors to Thailand are no longer required to show negative COVID-19 test results 72 hours prior to their departure, but they still need to undergo an RT-PCT test upon arrival. Despite appeals from the tourism sector for fully reopening the border, the Thai government has decided to gradually ease the restrictions as daily infections across the country remain high. As the approaching Songkrang New Year holiday might lead to a higher risk of spreading the coronavirus, the Ministry of Public Health is concerned about groups with lower vaccination rates who are mainly the elderly and children under five and has urged the public to strictly abide by epidemic prevention control measures. Two divers missing off Malaysia found safe. Search on for another. Police said French woman and British man who disappeared while diving off the coast of Malaysia were found safe, drifting at sea two and a half days after they went missing. Four people went missing on Wednesday at around noon on a training dive near Tokong Sangol, small island of the southeastern town of Mersin. The group's instructor, Christine Grodem, 35 from Norway, was rescued on Thursday. Two individuals was rescued by... Um, Fishermen spotted Alexia Alexandra Molina, 18 from France, and Briton Adrian Peter Chesters at a run in waters of Pengrang, a considerable distance to the south of where they disappeared. Mersin District Police Chief Cyril Edward Nguyen told reporters both were in stable condition at hospital. No details of rescue were available. Alexandra Molina, 18 years old. Nguyen said rescuers were searching for Chester's 14-year-old son, Dutch citizen, Nathan Rizzi Chester's. Police affirm Grodem told officials the group surfaced about an hour into the dive on Wednesday but could not find their boat. She was later separated from others after being caught in strong currents. The boat operator who took them to the dive site was detained after testing positive for drugs. Vietnam Oddmaker Vinfest files for U.S. IPO to fund expansion. Vietnamese automaker Vinfast said its Singapore-based holding company had filed for an initial public offering IPO with U.S. securities regulators as it planned spending of $4 billion on its first U.S. factory complex. Vinfast, which became the first fully-fledged domestic car maker in 2019, is betting big on the U.S. market, where it hopes to compete with legacy automakers and startups with electric SUVs and a battery leasing model. A source familiar with the matter said Vinfast would probably look to raise about $2 billion from the offering. A unit of Vietnam's biggest conglomerate vegan group, JCVig.hm, Vinfast said it had not determined the IPO size and price range. She said the IPO was planned for the second half of this year as one option to fund a plant plant in North Carolina and U.S. expansion. The company, established in 2017, plans to transition to all-electric vehicle production. Outside North America, Vinfast is looking for a plant in Germany. Vinfast says prices for its V8 SUV started from $41,000 in the United States versus about $63,000 for a Tesla SUV. It targets global electric vehicle sales of $42,000 this year. And that's the whole news for today. Stay safe, stay healthy. We'll see you again.